Hey everybody, John from John's DIY Playground. Uh, today we're going to do a drone motor repair replacement. Requires some soldering, so if you remember my last video when I did an introduction for beginners on drones and maintenance and repair, uh, you could see in one of, part of my video near the end I got this problem like this. My lower right motor is basically ready to be replaced. Um, been probably 30 or 40 flights minimum. Uh, but it's time and uh, luckily I ordered some motors from China about maybe a dollar a piece But they take three weeks to get here. So even if you don't have a motor burned out I'd highly recommend ordering some now just to have some on hand for only a buck a piece. So let's get started For replacing one of the motors on the X5C the electronics and everything are built off the bottom half of this copter So there's no need to remove anything on the bottom. So we have to kind of work from the top first Remove the four um, quadcopter uh, rotors. So get your uh, small little jeweler's tool screwdriver. Undo the screws on top of each of the four um, motors. And then just put those aside in a way that you'll remember the order and which corner these are from because they are directional. There's two that are clockwise spinning props and two that are the opposite. So if you screw that up, putting it back together, she's not going to fly right. So keep that in mind when you're taking these apart. I just like to kind of take the props and throw them off in each of the corners that they're going to be put back together in reverse order, keeping in mind that the uh, writing of the copter is facing me. So this is the orientation that I want to have it in. Now that we have the props off, if you do have prop guards like I do on this, you will have to take off the four prop guards as well. Um, the prop guard screws are a bit long. They do go into the bottom half, so you have to take out each of the four screws that hold on the prop guards. So just take off each one, remove the prop guards, put those to the side. Keep in mind then, when we go to the bottom side, there are going to be five screws per leg, or one, two, three, four, and then five. Those screws are all going to be the same exact size, but they're a little shorter than the prop guards. Um, so go ahead and Take your jeweler's tool and remove the five screws on each leg for a total of 20 of the smaller short screws. And then of course the extra four for the prop guards and have those uh, set aside in a place where they won't get away from you. I got the 20 bottom screws off, but now as we're trying to separate the two halves, don't start so soon. There's two bonus hidden screws under the battery compartment cover, so you can just lift that up. You don't have to remove the camera or anything, but to the left and right of power switch, there are two more screws that are the same size as the other 20 you just removed. So go ahead and get those other two out of there before you start trying to separate the top and bottom half. I got those two screws out from the switch, but wait, there's more. So hopefully y'all have still found along with me. Take these bottom landing gears off. I know this is pain in the butt because now we've already removed so many darn screws. Um, but that'll reveal four more screws, one in each corner, um, where the landing gear was covering up. So go ahead in there and uh, get those screws out too. And I swear this is the end of all of the uh, screw removal part of this uh, of the video. I know that went on forever. But uh, some guys I've read on the forums and other where places, they say you don't need to put all the screws back in. The thing holds itself together pretty good. I don't have any experience with that. But... Uh, yeah, if you're annoyed by replacing and removing all these screws when you have to do a motor repair, you can go ahead and just try to snap it back together when we're done and don't put the screws back in. Let me know how it goes if you guys do do that in the comments section below. Okay, finally got all those screws out of there. Uh, hopefully you followed along. Now to separate the halves, it comes together um, apart really easily once you have all that undone. You just start kind of squeezing in the middle between the two halves and then you can kind of wiggle it a little bit near the... The edges it seems to be a little bit tight over in that area of the quad but just kind of be gentle and take your time um, some of the screws may or may not be all the way out so just watch for that and then uh, yeah you'll have the, the two halves apart like I have here that last one was the bear to get out but um, yeah there we have it with the power switch again and make sure I got my orientation right motor that I'm looking to be replaced today is going to be down in the lower right so here's the top half removed and what we're looking at here okay we got our motors uh, 
that we got in the mail for replacement. They'll make be all stuck together when you get them, so take them out of the bag and have a look at them. You notice that the color of wires will be different on these different motors. Here's a pair of them that got black and white wires. Don't need those. <clears throat> Here's a couple with uh, the blue and red wires on them. We do want to keep these because our motor here that we're looking at replacing has the blue and red wires. So we're just going to go one for one and follow the color coding of the wires. If your wires don't match for some reason, don't worry too much because these are DC motors. And a DC motor, when the wire polarities are reversed or you're flipping the wires, let's say, the motor will spin the opposite way. So if you do screw something up, don't worry. You can always flip the wires where we're going to solder them onto the PC board. And you're probably going to be good to go. So let's get your soldering iron turned on. Uh, fire it up, let it warm up, and then let's uh, prepare and get this motor uh, taken out of uh, its uh, holder and get the new one in place. We got our iron on, soldering iron warming up, and to do this uh, motor removal step now, it's pretty easy. Just take your bad motor air and kind of grab down in this area of the assembly. Just kind of lift straight up, and that'll pop right off of there. Um, it just removes like that. What you want to do actually is take the motor um, from the gear side and push up and just kind of force it out of its uh, holder there. Um, it's pretty easy. You can tug the wires gently if you want to since this motor of course is shot. Um, but I'm not going to uh, completely clip it away at this point. I'm going to leave the motor uh, wires in place so I can kind of see number one the routing. So I'm going to take my new motor and I'm going to follow the same route of the wires currently of the old one. Take that and just follow it through here. Hopefully I'm keeping in my frame so you can see what I'm doing here. Through here, like so. And just get it through that hole there. <clears throat> and then you can use the old pinion gear if you want to on the old motor and push it onto the new one. My motors came with new gear, so I'm just pushing the new gear onto the, the motor shaft. You don't need any kind of special tool for that. Just push down with your finger gently and it'll go on there. It's just a, a nice press fit. You take the new motor and you just kind of push down until it won't go anymore. Don't force it or anything, but you'll see that the, the new gear engages with that big wheel that turns the prop. So I'm going to set this down then and kind of put it in place where we had it. Um, since that part of the repair is already virtually done. Now we're just going to take this wire and get it up near the circuit board and just watch. We're going to do one at a time. First we'll do the blue, use our iron to disconnect the blue, then we'll do the same with the red to make sure we're keeping our polarities correct. So let me stop and grab my soldering iron and we'll do that step next. Just real quick, I wanted to mention, I'm using a soldering station. You can use a pencil solder like a Weller 12 watt or a 15 watt pencil iron. But with my iron, <clears throat> this one you can control the temperature. It's a little more professional, but it only costs about 30 bucks. I'm gonna release a, another video very shortly of soldering technique and different types of soldering irons. But this AU or whatever you wanna call it in Chinese, I can't pronounce it, the 469. You don't want it to be too cold. You'll get a, if it's cold, you'll, your soldering joint will look gray and dull. If it's too hot, you can actually lift the traces on your circuit board, so you do not want to get your soldering iron tip too hot. On this particular iron, it's about a 60 watt iron. I would not recommend going past halfway, so that's the four and a half setting or just straight up and down. So that's what I'm going to use for soldering today. I'm going to just uh, get the soldering uh, PC board a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing, but just note that's what I'm using for my soldering iron today. All right, guys, so here's my soldering uh, circuit board up close. Um, I got a little bit of solder on the side here if I need it, but hopefully I won't. Um, my soldering two parts wires here are what I need to remove, so let's do one at a time. First, I'm going to take to the blue uh, with the soldering tip and just kind of hold it there until the solder starts to flow and then pull that off. <clears throat> and then I'm going to find the blue of the new wire. And grab that. The solder's still sitting on the pad. I don't think I need any more solder. So we'll just kind of put the wire there on top of the solder ball. Bring our soldering iron near it. we got to hold it there long enough so the solder flows for just a second. And then let it go. And that wasn't the best, but that'll do. Um, let's go to the red now. Um, it's nice if you have extra pair of hands, someone to hold this board for you or as much help as you can get just to secure things so they don't wiggle around but so there's the red one off of there and then find the red of the new motor got this wire here and again 
Just set that wire right on top of the solder ball. Come in with your solder tip. Just real gentle and patient and let it flow. And that's it. So that's it. Those two joints have been replaced with the new wires. I'm going to pull away the motor of the old wires and get this thing buttoned back up in the same way that I took it apart. Um, that really concludes this uh, portion of the tutorial. I'll show you what it looks like I'll put back together and we'll give it a quick test. Okay guys, I got everything snapped back together so hopefully you all remember to put your props back on in the same order you took them apart. Remembering that the orientation is critical for the props so they spin in different directions. Uh, and one reason to not put everything back together other than the four screws that I did for the props is if something's wrong, you don't want to have to take those other 26 screws back out again. So maybe do a quick uh, flight check like I'm going to do right here before you button everything up. So let's fire up the quad. So far normal, seeing those lights flashing, turn on my remote. Good. Pair it up. All right. Let's see. Good. We got them all going. So... Looks like a success here, and I'm just going to head out now. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. If you like this video, please do a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see some of my future videos. Thanks, guys, for stopping by John's DIY channel, the DIY Playground. Oh, my God.